Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the School of Public Health graduation ceremony. I have a few announcements and we'll get started immediately after that. My name is Dr. Koch Farmer. I'm the Assistant Dean for Undergraduate in the School of Public Health. If there's an emergency, we can all see the exits on each side, and please make sure that you walk there, don't run. When we begin to call graduates to the stage, it's important that please stay in your seats. We don't want to block the view of others when they're listening for their children as well, so uh, please stay in your seats and don't come up here. Please hold your applause until all names are called. Please turn off or silence your cell phones. We'll be hosting a reception immediately afterward over at Ritchie Coliseum. We would love to meet all of you. Please feel welcome to join us. It's over at Ritchie and we'll just follow the crowd. Thank you so much for being here this morning and we'll get started momentarily. Thank you.
please be seated. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the School of Public Health graduation ceremony. Thank you for joining us on this very special occasion. It's wonderful to see all of you. It's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Boris Lushniak, Dean of the School of Public Health, who will preside over today's ceremony. Great, thank you so much, Dr. Farmer. What a great day. So, so let's start off with a whoop and a holler. Huh? You know, it doesn't get much better than this to have a crisp December day to have this level of enthusiasm in this room to celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates. You know, later on, as, as we close in, in, you know, in a couple hours, uh, we'll acknowledge the fact that this isn't just about you, graduates, that, that it's about this community that has gathered here. But I want to reflect on the sense that it's a cold December day, but the warmth in this room is overwhelming. The idea that we can gather to have a celebration like this is very important. So on behalf of all the faculty and staff, I'm pleased to welcome the families and the friends of our graduates to the School of Public Health 2018 Commencement Ceremony. And to the graduates, once again, congratulations. In addition to our faculty that's seated on the stage today and those who didn't win the lottery who are seated in, seated in the front rows here, I also want to introduce a few special guests who have joined us today. Neil Meltzer, President and CEO of LifeBridge Health, who will deliver the commencement address. And Mina Griffion, the class of 2018 undergraduate student speaker and the public health science graduate. At this time, I'd like to introduce and welcome our esteemed chaplain, Mrs. Jessica Sanasek, who will lead us in a moment of reflection with the invocation. The university chaplains represent many cultures and faiths, but they work collectively to serve the spiritual needs of the University of Maryland. And Mrs. Sanasek represents the Baptist Collegiate Ministries. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you. She doesn't like when I use the word esteemed, but you know, chaplains are always so humble, and she does an incredible work here at the university. Thank you so much for blessing us with your presence. Thank you, Dean. Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. Congrats to our graduates. Um, I will be brief this morning, but my role this morning is to make sure that we take it all in. Um, as the Dean said, I serve here as your Baptist chaplain, but this morning, uh, that's not quite the role I'm gonna play. Um, what I'd like us to do this morning is take a moment and reflect on this moment. I want you to take a minute and think about your past. Not just the time you spent here at UMD, but all of the years leading up to this moment. Probably there's some regrets back there, but this morning I want us to focus on what's been so good. Time with your family here on campus. What have you learned, hopefully something, both inside and outside the classroom? What are the relationships that you've built that are gonna last you a lifetime? I want you to soak in the present. Look around for a hot second and take this in. It'll go quick. You've realized that your college years seem really long until you got to this moment and it blew by. Soak in this moment. And what you think towards the future? For some of you, there's a lot of excitement, maybe a little anxiety. Some of you have jobs, some of you are still looking for them. But to look at the future with anticipation of all that can be, be excited about that. The journey is not over its beginning. So we're gonna take a moment and just be quiet. If you are a person of faith, this is a moment for you to possibly pray. If you're not a person of faith, you can be just quiet. You can close your eyes, leave them open, put your head down, leave it up, whatever works the best for you. But together, to celebrate the diversity that is represented here at the university, we just wanna take a moment together and quietly reflect in whatever way is most appropriate for you and your background. So let's do that together. When we're done, I'll say a few words and I will turn it over to our student speaker. Being still and quiet is not something we are very good at. But today, 
as we take just a moment to do that, may we remember our past, soak in the present, and be excited for the future ahead. Thanks so much for having me this morning. I hope that we enjoy this celebratory time together. Thank you, Chaplain, for your voluntary service to the university, for joining us today to commemorate this milestone in the lives of our graduates and their families and friends, and for so eloquently putting this day into context. You know, I love the idea of silence, because it allows us in this very busy world, you as students, in this busy multiple years that you've been here, to be able to at least sit back and think about why this event is special, why you're dressed in this funny outfit, Right? and why you have loved ones gathered around you. From the faculty's perspective, it allows us to don our robes. Uh, I would like to think that our school were dressed like this every day, that we are the veritable Hogwarts of the University of Maryland, but we aren't. Uh, and so it reminds us of how we come from different backgrounds, right? The colors denote our academic institutions, our home where we trained. But what binds us now is no matter what colors we're wearing, we're now bound under the colors of the University of Maryland, and we all feel that allegiance to this university and to our mission at the School of Public Health. Now I'm pleased to introduce Mina Griffion, who earned her degree in public health science and was chosen to represent our graduating seniors. Mina gained outstanding research experience at the University of Maryland, which focused on the genetic mechanisms of human cells and viruses. Her work was recognized not only at campus research showcases, but also at the national scientific meetings. This led her to receive a cancer research training award at the NIH, National Institutes of Health, National Cancer Institute, where she is now studying genetic factors that may play a role in the development of cancer. In addition, she exemplifies the commitment of public health to providing service to communities through her work leading the organization, supporting hospitals abroad with resources and equipment. A campus nonprofit that collects medical supplies for developing countries. Following her training at the NIH, Mina plans to pursue a doctoral program to build her career as a research scientist. Congratulations to Mina and thank you for representing the School of Public Health so well. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our student commencement speaker. Greetings and congratulations, University of Maryland School of Public Health, Class of 2018. <laughs> I'm excited to stand here representing my fellow students as we celebrate the success of our hard work. We conquered the tremendous mental, physical, and financial stressors that often accompany the pursuit of a higher education. Thank you to everyone that has helped us get to this point. Our parents, friends, students, professors, and most importantly, to Studo for never letting me fail an exam after rubbing his nose or offering that broken down iPod I hadn't used in seven years. Thank you. I would like to focus on two memorable moments in this program that made a lasting impact on me as they played an integral role in connecting me to public health. Throughout our years in college, as School of Public Health majors, we've felt a strong feeling that I just couldn't name. It arose during several events in my college experience, and I'm sure it has for many of you as well. I was a president of the nonprofit supporting hospitals abroad with resources and equipment or SHARE. We collected medical supplies from local hospitals around us, and we donated to clinics abroad that needed them. The determination and collective effort of my fellow peers as we sorted the medical supplies left me with a sense of optimism that there are people in this world that are willing to help others and make our world a better place for everyone, regardless of race, gender, social class, or other categories. I know all of you sitting out there have felt that feeling as well. Social justice is something that has begun, been an integral part of our lives as we, have, as we have explored it through coursework and volunteering. I found myself experiencing this unnamed feeling when I heard about the gratitude from the clinics in Kenya that we were sending supplies to. They could hardly afford to have one nurse staffed for an entire clinic, let alone any medical supplies or equipment. 
This feeling arose again as I worked in the lab on viruses that cause major global health burdens, such as the Zika and chikungunya virus. I feel it today as I work at the NIH, committing myself full time to researching cancer-causing viruses such as HPV and KSHV, alongside some of the leading scientists in the world. Near the end of my time as an undergraduate student, I finally found a word that exemplifies that feeling. It is compassion. Compassion drives us as public health students to go further. As Martin Luther King Jr. once said, true compassion is more than just flinging a coin to a beggar. It comes to see that an edifice which produces a beggar needs restructuring. It is a feeling that unites all of us in this room together. The feeling that will get us to uproot and find and fix the social, economic, and environmental factors that afflict the health of millions today. The central theme for all SPH students is that we want to help people. Whether you are in kinesiology and you are helping people recover from an injury, or a family science major and you are helping couples work through deep-rooted issues, or a public health science major helping find the cure to infectious diseases, or a community health major and are working to help people in faraway lands create uh, clean drinking water. The road before us will be long and hard, but remember, that feeling of compassion we share that led us to be public health majors. People that are focused on doing much more than the bare minimum when it comes to helping others. Thank you so much and congratulations to summer class of 2018. Thank you so much, Mina. So I know there are members of Mina's family here in the audience, but Mina, come on back here because we're gonna do a wave right away because she had told me that most of her family is in Sweden. And so they're watching on the webcast. So Mina, wherever the webcast cameras are, give them a big hearty wave. Show them the top of your hat. It says thinking cap. So welcome to Sweden and we are very proud of Mina. So thank you so much for everything you bring. So Mina talked about compassion. And, and you know, one of our monikers here at the University of Maryland is what? Is we are a do-good campus. And I submit to you that I am honored and humbled to be the dean, why? Because we at the School of Public Health do good, we do good better, we do good more, and we do good with passion. It follows that in this profession, no matter which degree you're getting today, is ultimately this is about caring for others. It's about working for others. It's about connectivity with the world. So thank you for bringing those points to focus for us. Now, as we go through this ceremony, there are going to be transformations for you, the graduates. Right? You go from being a student to being a graduate. You go being, from being an affiliation of the school at one level to now that affiliation as an alum. We as a school that's been around for 10 years, but with many departments that have been around for much longer, this past year, kinesiology celebrated 125 years of existence on this campus. Behavioral community health, was it 60 or 65? 65 years of existence. And in the pathway, we have multiple alums, and you're going to join that society now. You can proudly say, is that's where I went to school, that's why I'm wearing a turtle, a turp, that's why I say the strange words about fear of the turtle. I, as a physician, always thought it dealt with the idea that turtles sometimes carry salmonella and it's about infectious diseases. Fear that turtle, oh my God, I can get sick. But it's more than that. It's our frame of mind. It's our thought of moving ahead, as President Lowe says, of never moving backwards, of sticking one's neck out and going one step at a time. And now to greet you into that network is Alyssa Todaro Brooks. She's a graduate of our school, obviously. She's the president of the Alumni Network. She vibrantly and with this enthusiasm leads this brand new network that you are soon to become members of. And guess what? This network doesn't work without your being part of it. You provide the ideas, you provide the enthusiasm, you provide that connectivity. So now, ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to, uh, to introduce to you Dr. Alyssa Todaro Brooks. Good morning, everyone. First and foremost, I want to offer a heartfelt congratulations to each and every one of you. 
In getting to know so many of you on a personal level, I have been so inspired, not only by your academic achievements, but by your persistence in overcoming obstacles, your passion for implementing change, and your unwavering commitment to service. Today represents a celebration of what you've accomplished thus far, but more importantly, it represents a vote, in, a vote of confidence in what you will achieve. And as Dean Lushniak said, I'm here today to be the first to welcome you as official graduates to the School of Public Health Alumni Network, which consists of tens of thousands of public health TERPs all over the world. Our mission is simple, to build commitment to the university and to the school. As official graduates, we need you to get involved, mentor a student, lend your expertise to help us with communication and outreach, or represent the university in your community. The possibilities are endless. You have fearlessly promoted health for all as students, inside and outside of the classroom. Now, we implore you to stay fearless. Bring us your ideas, your energy, and your passion for public health. We want to be there with you as you change our world for the better, regardless of the path you choose. We are proud to have you representing the university and the School of Prep Public Health. Congratulations again, and I look forward to celebrating with each of you. Thank you so much. We are proud to have a graduate such as Alyssa, who's now gone on to the NIH and does incredible work there as well. So that, you know, is one of the ideas of going out, being fearless, and then representing who we are proudly. And we ask you to join those ranks. So thank you again for your incredible lead leadership as part of our alumni network. It's now my pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker today, Mr. Neil Meltzer. Neil's a great friend of the School of Public Health, and he serves on the Dean's Council, which is a distinguished group of healthcare leaders who advise me as Dean on decisions regarding to the growth and development of the school. Neil is not only a successful healthcare leader as president and chief executive officer of LifeBridge Health, one of the largest, most comprehensive, and most highly respected providers of health-related services serving the Baltimore region, he is also a great champion for public health. He brings a community-focused approach to every healthcare decision and demonstrates through his leadership that health extends far beyond the walls of a hospital setting. We need more visionary leaders like you, Neil, as partners to advance health equity and create innovative solutions to help communities thrive. It is a great honor to have him here with us today. Welcome, Mr. Neil Meltzer. Thank you, Dean Lushniak, and thanks to all of you for the honor of speaking this morning on this exciting day in your lives. First, let me offer my sincere congratulations to the, uh, to the uh, graduates. I, myself, was once a student in public health. I know the hard work, dedication, and persistence it took to get here. I'd also like to offer my congratulations to your families and friends, professors, and advisors, those of you in the caps and gowns receiving the diplomas, but this achievement also goes to everyone who has supported and nurtured you, giving you the skills and the knowledge to move forward in this bold and noble profession. Your public health training will shape how you view the world. As the CEO of a large health system, I can say that my public health background is the filter through which I pass every business decision. As you've been hearing here during your time, public health offers a real opportunity to help people and do good. Over the past two years, it has truly been my pleasure to be a member of the Dean's Advisory Council and to hear about the amazing work you've been doing here at the School of Public Health. At one of our recent meetings, Dean Lushniak said something that really stood out and resonated with me. He said that public health begins the moment you step outside your front door. So I want to tell you a little bit about what I see when I step out my front door at my office at Sinai Hospital in Baltimore. For those of you that don't know Sinai, it sits on a small hill overlooking Northern Parkway, a road that has about six lanes of traffic with an occasional turn lane thrown in. You probably know that Northern Parkway is a fairly heavily traveled east-west thoroughfare. Now about a half a mile down from Sinai, 
Northern Parkway connects to the Jones Falls Expressway, which is a major north-south artery taking people in and out of the city. Now at this point, some of you are probably wondering, why is this guy spending so much time talking about a road in Baltimore? And what in the world does it have to do with public health? Well, here's why. If you live on one side of Northern Parkway, your life expectancy is 87.1 years. However, if you cross the street, your life expectancy goes down to 68.2 years. Crossing six lanes of traffic turned into a 19-year difference in life expectancy. 19 years. That's what I see when I step outside my front door. A clear, tangible, and real-life example of the need for public health. Six lanes, 19 years. Now, as students of public health, you'll understand that the reasons for this discrepancy are multifaceted, driven largely by the social determinants of health, including poverty, food deserts, poor disease management, and lack of opportunities around education, employment, housing, and transportation. For those of you without the public health degree, well, it's complicated. However, public health challenges are often complicated. And as students, you've practiced your skills of decision thinking to take on complex issues. Sometimes in public health, we can get caught up in the complexity of it all. Many of you may be swept up in the numbers and the data and the analysis. You may, come, may, may become fixated on drafting policy, crafting the perfect message, or creating a graph or pie chart the likes of which the world has never seen. These are important, but at its core, public health is all about helping people. And sometimes you have to do that one person at a time. I'd like to share with you a story that illustrates how a complex problem can sometimes have an unexpected solution. When my team began looking at these social and economic problems facing our communities, I channeled my public health background and we started by hotspotting. I said, let's take a look at 100 patients who've been in the hospital or in the emergency department three or more times in a single year. Did they live in the same block? Live in the same apartment building? from the same zip code? Did they have the same physician or the same diagnosis? Well, we discovered a woman who had been to the hospital more than 100 times in one year. Turns out she was a single mother, three children, also a fragile diabetic. So to try to understand why this woman kept coming back to the hospital, members of our population health team went to the woman's home. First time visit. We discovered that she didn't have a working stove which made preparing healthy moods virtually impossible. So we took my charge card, literally my charge card, out of my wallet and bought her a stove. She also knew very little about the basics of nutrition, which was affecting her diabetes. So we gave her three nutrition classes and filled her refrigerator with healthy food. Then we followed up and continued to follow up with weekly home visits, for which we don't get reimbursed. And guess what? She hasn't returned to the hospital either as a readmission or as a patient in the emergency department. We bought this family a stove and put them on the road to a healthier life. We now spend about $20 million every year for population health initiatives such as this, with programs ranging from, ranging from pediatric HIVs to support for unwed fathers to housing upgrades to benefit seniors, all aiming to keep people healthy and out of the hospital. By doing so, we save the healthcare system about $34 million annually in Maryland alone through reduced readmissions and other health-related costs. Now, not only does this make financial sense, but most importantly, we're improving people's lives. As I remind our teams every day, behind every number or statistics, there are real people and we can never lose sight of that. When I decided to pursue a degree in public health, I was a tree-hugging, Birkenstock-wearing dreamer of the 70s who had what I thought was a very simple goal, probably like many of you here, I wanted to save the world. Well, working in public health, you're on the forefront of massive issues facing our society. Poverty, social disparities, addiction, violence, and so much more. You know, again, there's nobility in those who want to take on complex challenges and do good work. As you look outside your front door, whether it's a mountain in South America 
a river in Africa, or a street in inner city America, you may choose what challenges you seek to take on. At other times, the world may bring those challenges to you. Here in College Park, you've watched your campus struggle with issues such as the death of a football player from heat stroke. On our hospital campuses, our doctors and nurses in our emergency departments struggle to tell families that gun violence has killed their loved ones, while others tell us that this issue is not in our lane and we should not be dealing with it. Many people will have many different perspectives on what's best for our world. Debates around public health issues can be passionate and political. As you seek to bring about change, you need to build your argument and advocate for those who aren't able to advocate for themselves. You've learned how to put together policy and support your argument with information and data, which can be challenging at a time when science and facts don't always seem to matter. It can sometimes feel like we're moving sideways, if not backwards. However, from vaccines to seatbelts, you know the power of public health to make a difference. As some of my role models have shared with me, as we work to better our country and our world, the work that we don't complete, the next generation will finish. You won't be doing this alone. We'll be in there fighting with you. I've not given up on my goal to save the world, even if it's only one person or one stove at a time. Now, during a graduation address, I'm probably supposed to offer you some advice, a pithy statement or a memorable quote to guide you as you head out to save the world. Oprah Winfrey told graduates to stay hopeful and live responsibly. Steve Jobs advised to find what you love doing. Some of you, or maybe, in the, maybe not in the audience, but back here, may remember a Chicago Tribune writer who once advised graduates to wear sunscreen. And believe it or not, the words to that column were set to music and the song, Everybody's Free to Wear Sunscreen, you can go Google it, became an unexpected worldwide hit in the late 90s. Well, I'm not sure if I can offer anything that would land on the Billboard Top 100. However, when students ask me what they should know as they start their careers, I always tell them the same thing, this one thing. Be authentic. Oscar Wilde put it plainly when he said, be yourself, everyone else is taken. In an era of so-called fake news and reality TV, which we know is not really reality at all, we crave authenticity, and we know it when we see it. It stands out and shines through. Each of you brings an individual perspective and unique talents to the world. As you look outside your front door, you may see things as no one else has seen them before, and you may have a vision about how to make them better. If we truly believe that the health of our communities is only as strong as the well-being of our citizens, then I know that our communities will be in good hands. One final thought I'd like to share with you, two small words that I think can make a big difference. They're simply this, thank you. And if your public health path takes you overseas, make sure you get a translation for thank you before you go. Everyone wants to feel appreciated. I've seen stalemates soften and curmudgeons crumble with a simple thank you. Say thank you to your family and your friends. Say thank you to your teachers and your mentors. And say thank you to your classmates. You've been through a lot together. None of you got here today on your own. I'm very fond of an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Sometimes you're going to need to check your ego at the door so you can go farther together. And today, I see before me a group of smart, educated, and committed public health graduates who are ready to go the distance. With that, I again would like to say thank you to all of you for allowing me to be part of your special day. Celebrate your achievement and enjoy your journey. There's so much good work to do. Now it's your moment to step outside your front door. I can't wait to see how you'll transform the world. Congratulations and best wishes to all of you. Thank you, Neil. Gracias. Merci. Zinkui. 
Дякую. You know, my father, my departed father, always used to say thank you to my mom at dinner time in like eight different languages. And I found that as a kid that was kind of irritating. Now I do that at home. Uh, so the word thank you is, is, is important. The word public health is important as well. And you know, you know, especially our kinesiology students, the, the importance of movement. And to our crowd that's not aware of what public health is about, I, I boil it down to the simple P's, the three P's. It's about preventing disease and injury. It's about promoting health and wellness with the goal of prolonging a high quality of life. Now, I'm going to divert a little bit because we've been sitting for a while, so I'm going to ask those who are able, please stand up and stretch, right? That's a public health thing. You don't see this, chaplain, occur at many other commencements, right? Because we love to live what we're about, right? And it's okay. Feel free to move. Stretch those legs. Move those muscles, right? How cool this is that we actually, in public health, personify what we're all about. Now I'm going to take a, a lesson from, from our esteemed chaplain, and I want you to just stand, if you're able, and shut your eyes. And in the moment of contemplation, think through what we're thankful for today. Think through the pride that you feel personally or for someone around you. Think through the friendships that you have made and relax. Big breath in, big breath out, big breath in, you are going to sleep. <laughs> now, as a final example of health, turn to your left, turn your, to your right, turn behind you, say hello, hug, high five, introduce yourself, tell people who you are and why you're here today. just done? What have we just done? We've actually gone through an exercise, and you can be seated now. We've gone through an exercise that tells us what the definition of health is. And I always refer to this definition. It's on a poster or on a sheet of paper in my office. And it reminds me every day what it's all about. Because health is complete. It's not partial. It's complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease and infirmity. Let's live healthy lives. Let's make sure that those three components are part of our lives each and every day. Commencement is the day on which the school bestows our highest honors upon our students. The bachelor's level students, the master's level, the doctoral students. At this time, I ask that Dr. Koch Farmer join me as we begin the recognition of our School of Public Health degree recipients. Coke. Thank you, Dean Lerschniak. Will those receiving a doctoral or master's degree please rise? Dean Lerschniak, in accordance with the recommendations of the faculty of the Graduate School, I present to you those students who have successfully completed all graduate requirements for the Doctor of Philosophy, Master of Arts, Master of Health Administration, Master of Public Health and Master of Science degrees. Thank you, Dr. Farmer. I acknowledge the recommendations of the faculty of the Graduate School and am pleased to extend my congratulations to each graduate for successfully completing all degree requirements. Will the Doctor of Philosophy and Master's degree recipients please proceed to the platform? It's my pleasure to now introduce Dr. Dushanka Kleinman, Associate Dean for Research and Principal Associate Dean, who will recognize the recipients of the School of Public Health graduate degrees. And because we are public health people, and the issue of, you know, disease spread, influenza and all that, if you haven't gotten vaccinated, get vaccinated. That's a public health message, courtesy of the School of Public Health at the University of Maryland. Uh, but you'll see me doing something a little bit different. We're going to be doing elbow pumps and not handshakes, because that's what public health is about, prevention. 
And so I want to embrace, I can embrace, but you know, that's one way of looking at the world a little bit differently this time of year. Allison Paxis, PhD in the Department of Family Science. Her dissertation was the Operation Pedro Pan over the life course, and her advisor is Dr. Marion Moser Jones. <laughs> Abigail Pickford, the Department of Behavioral and Community Health. Her dissertation is entitled An Exploration of Public Health Worker Engagement with Health-Related Social Movements Through an Analysis of At Black Lives Matter. Her advisor is Dr. Robert Gold. We are now starting the Masters in Behavioral and Community Health. Lauren Krieger, Kremer, the Department of Behavioral and Community Health. And now for the Masters in Kinesiology, Terrell Everett. And now for the Department of Health Services Administration. Anuwapo Owalabi. Seju Patel. Mariah Getty. Semhar Johannes. Cynthia Perez. Cora Treas. Cartagena. Carly Johnson. Maria Costigan. Davinana Etwaru. Kathleen Ranny. <laughs> Lilith Hankobian. <laughs> Charles Le. Visa Webshed. Evelyn Chana. Aran Kim. Marisha Robertson. Aaron Wagner. Melanie Amparo. Julio Valencia. Marcy Doloach. For the Environmental Health Sciences Masters, Rebecca Patterson.
Congratulations to the Master of Arts, the Master of Health Administration, the Master of Public Health, and the Master of Science degree recipients. Let's have another big cheer for our Master's degree students. I don't think I gave a cheer and a shout out to our uh, doctoral students. So congratulations to the doctoral students. Another big cheer for them. <laughs> Dr. Farmer, if you will. Thank you. Will those receiving the Bachelor of Science degree in Public Health Science please rise? Kristen Cipriani, Assistant Director of the Public Health Science Program, will present the degree recipients. Dean Lushniak, in accordance with the recommendations of the Faculty of Public Health Science, I present to you those students who have successfully completed all graduation requirements and are recipients of the Bachelor of Science degree. Kristen, I acknowledge the recommendations of your faculty and am pleased to extend my congratulations to each graduate. Nina Griffion. Masa Sarami. Duyun Lee. Ilse Yi. Sonali Dahal. Timothy McKelvey. Maham Dosti. Mabel Lee. Givana Widobro. Caroline Stipa. Jone Jackson. Julianne Ogden. Kelsey Albert. Christopher Rose. Erica Lijo. Michael Bent. Karen Furcolo. Nirvan Jalali. Alia Robertson. Karen Diop. Benjamin Obando. Marlon Cruz. Maria Umar. Aubrey Driver. Rachel Dizon. Marinda Keen. Sarah Koglazier. Sandra Coombe. <clears throat> Makia Rodney. Brian Ichari. Evie Eribo. Shade Greenfield. Amahasolu Salasu. David Okaribi. Malik Walters. Caroline Forney. 
Alana Sadur. Byron Kunst. Julian Tuttle. Kathleen Lindsay. Kelly Darlington. Tracy Wise. Hannah Chung. Jamie Trimble. Emma Bauer. Zachary Flair. Matthew Buell. Aisha Ali. Soraya Khan. Masa Ameri. Malaz Ibrahim. Victor Reyes. <laughs> Nelson Madeira. Vivek Ravichandran. Kevin Shu. Mariam Mohammadi. Sabrina Owasan. Abbas Chakabi. Simon Chen. Inga East Stacy Rosary. Alfonso Davidson. Candace Chi. John Odenwald. Will those receiving the Bachelor of Science degree from the Department of Family Science please rise? <laughs> Dr. Sandra Quinn, Department Chair, will present the degree recipients. Dean Lusniak, in accordance with the recommendation of the faculty of the Department of Family Science, I present to you those very enthusiastic students who have successfully completed their graduation requirements and are recipients of the Bachelor of Science degree. Great, what a cheer out there for these graduates, huh? <laughs> Dr. Quinn, I acknowledge the recommendations of your faculty and I am pleased to extend my congratulations to each graduate. Matt Wheeler. Denma Taribo. Raymond Rodriguez. Sarah Williams. Gina Oselesi. Diania Logan. Adalid Aliukiran. Sarah St. Pierre. 
Bridget Flaherty. Emily Hunt. Song Nian. Amanda Bingham. Praise Carson. Ryan Hill. Emma, Emma Myers. Jarvis Davenport. Ty Johnson. Christopher Jones. Julie Nyo. Darby Smith. Caitlin Moore. Tyler Patterson. Tanya Machuka. Marvin Mata. Brian Ogbona. Daniela Nauman. Alexandrine Amivi and Mifa Bakwaya. Taylor Williams. Love Jessica Vera. Sarah E. Guerrero. Diamond Thomas. Yeladari Cantor Guerrero. Amarita Fernandez. Shelton Ely. Andre Mullings. Will those receiving the Bachelor of Science degree from the Department of Behavioral and Community Health please rise. <laughs> Dr. Barbara Kerbo, Department Chair, will present the degree recipients. Dean Lushniak, in accordance with the recommendations of the faculty of the Department of Behavioral and Community Health, I present to you those students who have successfully completed all graduate requirements and our recipients of the Bachelor of Science degree. Thank you, Dr. Kerbo. I acknowledge the recommendations of your faculty, and I am pleased to extend my congratulations to each graduate.
Chow Do. Amanda Brosh. Morgan Gigax. Gabriela Hernandez Serra. Elizabeth Gibson. Paula Solo. Jamillion Maynard. Joshua Friedar. Brooke Cariello. Lily Franz. Amanda Price. Nicole Cherubet. Jade Hackley. Ahmed Kibwana Joff. Monique Parker. Matthew Walde Georges. Hajra Alvi. Dorothy Bowie. Brandon Estime. Jonathan Borja Juanitez. Uchenna Wabilor. Tami Olatunji. Esley Ramos. Alisa Lee. Tahatina Shawakina. Stacy Viegas. Sanchari Ram Rockman. Tanvir Korsani. Latifa Douglas. <laughs> Melody Fong. <laughs> Kit Parkinson. <laughs> Megan Capitelli. <laughs> Sammy Talkman. Shakia Singleton. Lauren Chan. Ha Twin Bo. Will those receiving the Bachelor of Science degree from the Department of Kinesiology please rise? <laughs> Dr. Bradley Hatfield, Department Chair, will present the degree recipients. Dean Lushniak, in accord with the recommendations of the faculty in the Department of Kinesiology, I present to you those students who successfully completed all graduation requirements and are recipients of the degree Bachelor of Science. Dr. Hatfield, I acknowledge the recommendations of your faculty and I am pleased to extend my congratulations to each candidate.
from the Department of Kinesiology, Julie Deng. Adrian Adams. Andrew Neely. Callahan Allen. Sarah Farahani. Havaria Abera. Kimberly Marshall. Janine Almeida. Martha McKinney. Jessica Corbett. Catherine Cleary. Vincent Plasic. Brandon Vu. Rachel Constantino. Francis Tejan Muller. Victor Rivero. Kevin Schneider. Megan Tidy. Analua Fataco. Also from the Department of Kinesiology, Ivana Yakovev. Alyssa Rufina. Mariah Williams. Keong Park. Moses Kano. Alexis Proctor. Benjamin Ronceville. Robert Cherichella. Benjamin Hauk. Reed Firestone. Wyatt Glasgow. Giovanni Puea. Christopher Cruz, Sean Martin, Trisha Pilgrim, Lyric Forney, Justin Brown. Kevin Vogelpohl. Haley Lala. Celso Rivera. Frank Giogo. Arash Emmer Motri. Miles Hill. Shane Dennis. Forrest Schmid. Darius Eddings. Tyler Myrick. Colin Boberski. Alexis Rowland. Isabella Chu.
Derek Salazar Harrison, Nancy Morgan, Daniel Day, BJ Karop, Jaya Pitts. Samuel Bell Navis. <laughs> Kian Shasti. Sarah Ferret. Brian Woodard. Jessica Moore. Shake Chom, Kayla Richardson, Carlos Benzego, Lanisha Page. Tia Matthews, Armani Dew, Jessica Adjaman, Joy Akuchi, Philip Tardonsky, Mikkel Ames. Congratulations again to the Bachelor of Science degree recipients. So now we have the closure coming up, right? Congratulations to all our degree recipients from the School of Public Health. At this point, we'd like to recognize the bachelor's degree recipients who have earned Latin honors. This is summa cum laude, magna cum laude, and cum laude. They're the highest commencement honors that the university confers for sustained excellence in scholarship. They are awarded to the top 10% of all students graduating in the School of Public Health over the course of a year. Summa cum laude is awarded to students with a GPA in the highest 2% of all college graduates. Magna cum laude to the next highest 3% and cum laude to the following 5%. Will those students graduating with Latin honors please stand? Congratulations to our Latin honors students. Way to go. Now's the time for thank yous. On behalf of the School of Public Health, I'd like to thank Neil Meltzer for being here as our commencement speaker. And with a small token of appreciation, Neil, I hope you like turtles. <laughs> also, to the organizers of this event, to the faculty and staff, those who have served as marshals, please stand up. Anyone who played an organizing role for the acclaim from the audience, please. Way to go for people who have been important to us. <laughs> to the faculty who's present here, once again, stand up and stretch while you're doing this. But you know, without the faculty, none of this takes place. Without the students, none of this takes place. So faculty to the acclaim of the audience for the work that you have done. Thank you. You know, Neil Meltzer turned to me as we were on stage and saying, you know, this is kind of cool because from the faculty's perspective, from the staff's perspective, from the, the leadership of the school's perspective, 
you graduates are our pride and joy, right? It's this moment in time that we can reflect on success. Now it's left up to you. But don't forget, there's other people around you who have played a key role in all of this. I know that the parents, relatives, and friends who are here today to celebrate with you are so proud of your accomplishments, as are the professors and instructors, the staff, and the leadership of the school. But we know that any major accomplishment in life is not the result of an individual acting alone. We give you the accolades. You have the diploma. But today's a day to say thank you as Neil Meltzer had talked about. Your success that we celebrate today was made possible through the love, through the support, through the guidance, through the encouragement of your moms, your dads, your siblings, your aunts, your uncles, your grandparents, your mentors, your teachers, your advisors, your counselors, your friends. Graduates, now it's your turn to recognize them for all they have done to make it possible for you to be here today. Graduating students, please stand and give those people a round of applause. Please be seated, way to go. Did I mention the important role that our advisors and counselors and those who play those roles within our departments and school play? Just for another sense of unity here, I want our counselors and advisors to also please stand and get the acclaim of the audience for what you have done in terms of your role in this. The advising staff of the university, thank you. Now there's symbolism in all this. As I mentioned, there's symbolism of what we wear, there's symbolism in the, the hats, in the garb, but there's also symbolism in the tassel. And now we come to that moment of sharing in this age-old tradition. Would all of the School of Public Health degree candidates please rise? And I'll ask Mina to please join me here with your fellow graduates. And this is the changing of the direction of the tassel. Tassel should be, for the record, on your right-hand side right now. And per the instructions given to me, you grasp your tassel. And Mina will lead us on the count of three. People, be braced for this. Because I've seen incredible things occur during this ceremony. Incredible electricity surge through the crowd. A transformation of people's lives through this act. Brace yourself, audience. Mina, lead us in the countdown. Three, two, one. Thank you. So this signifies the beginning of a new era of your lives. You can be seated. Congratulations once again to all our graduates. So final words from the dean. You know, the deans aren't here as commencement speakers. That's why we bring in incredible individuals to do that. The deans aren't here to, to talk from a student's perspective. That's why we have students here on stage. You've received the accolades from department chairmen, from your professors, from those who have been around you. As the dean, I set you off on this pathway with these final words which is this transformation, this change from one side of your head to the other, is more than symbolic. It's a sense of responsibility. And I want to remind you of the sense of responsibility we have as public health people. No matter which degree you walked away with, realize that part of our mission is to do good, as I mentioned earlier to others, is to realize that the world is not an easy place. You've been through incredible challenges, incredible joys, I hope, at the University of Maryland. But the tough work begins now. And for some of you, the tough work is going into the job market and doing good there. To others, it's fearlessly going and pursuing other degrees, going to professional schools, getting those masters or those doctorate levels. 
But ultimately, the common thread is to do good. And let's remember what we're up against here, right? This is the solemn moment to remind you that in all the fun and games, the world needs us. The world needs public health. Yeah, you know, I open up the paper, and the, you know, papers are old-fashioned. I'm an old-fashioned guy. I still sit there with my coffee in the morning, and I look through a paper. To you younger people, look at your cell phones and check out the news. And the news every single day is filled with a public health dilemma. Yesterday, it's e-cigarettes and high school students, a new addiction breaking out, sold by an industry that takes over for tobacco, a scourge of mankind in public health. We read about the idea of gun violence in our society, violence in general. How do we deal with that? We deal with even the concept of how we pay for health care, right? That we, the richest nation on this planet, still haven't figured it out. And people go without that care. As Neil mentioned, the idea that those five numbers, a zip code, can be an indicator of how healthy you are is not right for our nation. We talk about the idea that we still deal with age-old problems and new problems. Infectious diseases, right? The, the, the elbow pump was there for a reason. My elbow's killing me now. But the concept out there is we still have to be aware. We commemorate this year the 100th anniversary of the misnamed Spanish influenza something that killed millions of people worldwide. Need I remind you that in the United States last year, 80,000, 80,000 people died from the flu. So we think these problems are solved, but they aren't. Issues of obesity, overweight, lack of exercise, we don't move enough. The reason I bring up this is that I pass upon you, the next generation of public health leaders, by getting that degree today, you now share in the responsibility of making our world better, of changing things. So as the Dean of the School of Public Health, I bestow upon you a relief of some of the burden carried by generations that have come ahead of you. Because you're our A-team that's coming in. You're the people who are, with our help and support, going to carry that torch and make our community better and make our state better and make our region better and make our nation better and make our world better. Gun violence a public health issue, climate change a public health issue, poverty, underemployment, unemployment are public health issues. This gets serious, folks, but you can be part of the answer. <coughs> Thank you so much for your potential. Thank you for what you have done. At this time, I want to remind you to please, we go from the serious moment back into joviality, right? Sad face off, happy face on. Because we have, in public health, something very few other professions have. We are innately optimistic people. And I always say, in public health, unless you're an optimist, you will fail. So graduates, if you don't see yourself as an optimist right now, that tassel switch, you are now, raise your right hands, I am an optimist. This is kind of cool, right? Become those optimists. So now, in that optimistic street, <coughs> we go across the street to the Ritchie Coliseum, right across Baltimore Avenue. Careful crossing the street, public health issue. Look both ways. Guess what? Those rules never change. All of our graduates should get to know, should know how to get there. There's another commencement ceremony coming in here after us. So for them to begin setting up, I ask that the graduates and the families and friends meet over at the reception. Easier place. There's more room and there's refreshments there. If you walk out the main doors, you'll see this building ahead of you directly across the street. And now, as we close this incredible ceremony, did people have a good time at this thing? As we close this ceremony, will the audience please remain seated while us, the big shots, the platform party, faculty, and graduates as well, the honorees all exit first. So please, 
family members and all, wait until everybody that looks dressed up in a gown and a cap is gone, and then you can move. Thank you so much for being part of our School of Public Health community. Thank you for your support, past support, current support, and ongoing future support. The school needs you. Yes, parents, we need you. Yes, friends, we need you. Yes, graduates, we need you. To be the school we want to be, we need to be in the 21st century. That means constant progress, and that means constant support from you. Thank you for what you have brought for the good of our school. I now announce these ceremonies over. Thank you so much. <laughs>